As someone who's played Yu-Gi-Oh! for more than a few weeks, you would know by now that cards can be a bit more expensive than you may have thought going in. This is a list of some cards that I, as a budget player, would like to see get reprints in order to knock down the prices at least a little bit. Keep in mind that a few of these will not be meta-relevant or quite too expensive as well, and this is, again, because I occasionally play casual strategies that I don't think warrant the price tag. So to start us off, let's go ahead and look at this first card. Number 10, Raid Raptor, Tribute Lanius. Raid Raptor Tribute Lanius is a level 4 Winged Beast effect monster whose effect reads, During your main phase, if this card is normal or special summoned this turn, you can send one Raid Raptor card from your deck to the graveyard. During your main phase 2, if this card destroyed an opponent's monster by battle this turn, you can add one Rank Up Magic Quick Play spell card from your deck to your hand. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except for Raid Raptor monsters. You can only use this effect of Raid Raptor Tribute Lanius once per turn. Now, to someone who doesn't play Raid Raptors or know what they do, that might not sound like a whole lot, but that's a really good card for the archetype, because the deck's main goal is to make Xyz monsters and rank up as fast as you can. Tribute Lanius helps you get to those rank up cards as fast as you can, allowing you to build up to that level 12 Raid Raptor Final Fortress Falcon. Tribute Lanius currently goes between $6 to $8, and while that might not be too bad at first, trying to get a playset, meaning all three copies of the card, that means it'll cost you $18 or more in order to just have those three cards. That's why I think that one might deserve some kind of reprint and some kind of later pack. Number 9, Spellbook of Knowledge. Spellbook of Knowledge is a spell card supporting the Spellbook series and Prophecy series of spells and monsters. Spellbook of Knowledge's effect reads, Send to the graveyard either one spellcaster monster you control, or another spellbook card from your hand or face up from your field, except spellbook of knowledge. And if you do, draw two cards. You can only activate one spellbook of knowledge per turn. That's a pretty good draw two spell for the archetype. And the thing is, with this card, its price runs about $12 a copy. So that makes getting three of these into the deck quite expensive compared to most of the other cards in the deck. Spellbooks have not been in the meta for quite a few years now, and I think that maybe getting a few of the cards out uh, to make them a little cheaper wouldn't hurt anything. Number 8. Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss. Dante is about a $10 Xyz monster, uh, specifically related to the Burning Abyss archetype. The thing is, Dante has actually been pretty good recently. Uh, a Burning Abyss deck topped in the UK Nationals not too long ago, and... The deck is still fairly consistent. That's why, even though this card costs less than the previous card on the list, it's more important to get out to other players who might want to play something a little bit stronger or get into the game on a higher level faster. Dante costs about $10 at the moment, so maybe just one reprint pretty soon-ish would be pretty nice. Number 7. Ancient Gear Fusion. Ancient Gears aren't really going anywhere. They've got a bunch of new support out of the new Legendary Duelist set that came out in about February. Uh, but nothing really drastic happened to the deck. Ancient Gear Fusion is a fantastic card for it, but it doesn't make it consistent enough yet in order to push them to be topping. However, Ancient Gear Fusion is running for about $25 at the moment, meaning that three copies is going to cost you about $75. Bucks. And for a deck that isn't going to do a whole lot, this card just needs to come down. Number 6, Mermail Abyss Megalo. Mermail Abyss Megalo is pretty important to a Mermail deck, allowing you to discard two water monsters from your hand to the graveyard, and that helps with some of the effects that they do in the game. It also has higher attack than most of the other monsters in the deck, meaning it is pretty important for battle as well. Mermail Abyss Megalo currently costs a roughly $15 for the lowest copies, 30s for the higher, and I think it goes up from there, so I would like to see this card get a reprint soon as well. Number 5, Invoked Makaba. Makaba is a pretty important card to the Mech Knight Invoked engine. Uh, many of the other Invoked engines use the card as well. It has a nice negate ability, and its light attribute helps out with plenty of other light archetypes. The card currently costs roughly $20, however, it has been confirmed now that the card will get a reprint later this year. Number 4, Droll and Lockbird. Droll and Lockbird is a fantastic card that locks your opponent out of drawing for pretty much the rest of the turn, or at least adding cards from their deck to their hand. This card cost roughly $8 just a few months ago, however it just picked up in the meta, lots of people are using it, and the price has launched on up to $20, and I think I've seen it going up to $25. This card would be good for players all over to have, and maybe knocking down that price through another reprint would be pretty good. Number 3, Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. 
Ash Blossom has been an important card in the game since it's released in Maximum Crisis. Lots of people have played it, and it has proven useful time and time again. However, it has recently been overshadowed by Droll Knockbird, even though it is keeping a much higher price tag of roughly $45, even after the most recent reprint in Legendary Collection Kaiba. Ash Blossom is still a very rare card, and giving it another reprint, it just makes it that much easier for other players to be able to use it. Number 2, Firewall Dragon. Firewall Dragon is an incredible card that's taken over the meta. With its ability to bounce monsters and give you additional summons, without a once per turn clause, this card has made itself a staple in many decks across the meta. However, since so many people use it, it does mean that the price does begin to rise. Firewall Dragon has fallen a little bit from where it was, but it still sits at about $30, and many budget players just can't warrant spending that much money on a single card. At the time of recording this video, it has been confirmed that Firewall Dragon will be receiving a reprint in the Mega Tens coming at the end of August. I figured that here between number 2 and number 1, I would put in some honorable mentions that I would like to see reprinted, but aren't too bad either. This involves a few of the Cosmo cards, namely Cosmojo and Dark Eclipser, and a few Mech Knight cards as well, those being Blue Sky and Purple Nightfall. Let's move on to number 1. Number 1, Evenly Matched. Evenly Matched is a terrifying trap card that can be played from your hand. It makes an opponent remove cards from play up until they have the same number that the opponent controls, which because of the card being a trap card, is 1. This card is still at 3, and it remains insanely powerful, but also keeping an incredibly high price tag. Evenly Matched currently goes for about $55, and I would love to see it reprinted in August's Megatons. Thanks for coming out and watching today, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if I should do more videos similar to this. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.